How's everybody doing out there? This is our new Facebook Live webinar. We're going to be doing this weekly. And this is called The Purpose Tribe because we're just going to talk about things that give us purpose, that make us excited about life, that are inspiring, that are conscious. And so thank you so much for coming on. And I'm still trying to figure this out to get it so I can see all your comments because I want to make sure we do continue to interact. Okay, I think we got it. We'll just comments pop okay, up there. Great. So you may see Perfect. us sometimes staring at over here looking and see. Hi, hi Connie, hi, hi Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, hey wait, aren't you coming on wait, in a minute? Later. In a, she'll be on <laughs> in, at 1.30. So, okay, so my name is Araya Velasquez, for some of you that don't know me that are watching, and I'm Laura Brecken, and this is, like I said, it's called The Purpose Tribe, so every week, Sunday at 1 o'clock, we're going to be on stream live. Yes, yes, so we're going to be having some conversations between Araya and I, and then we're going to bring a guest on for the last half hour, and um, just bring some really great conscious topics to um, to raise our purpose and our light and um, yeah it'll be fun yeah it'll be really fun so this is this is the debut so just <laughs> putting it out there well I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna slowly get into this I'm Brian has been better with the videos than I have been so this is pretty new to me but um but we're gonna do this and it's gonna be really fun I'm excited yeah and and this is. I mean, I've only been on some other people's Facebook lives a few times. This is new to me, too. So I think, you know, I, I used to be a, I'm still a singer, but I used to do sing more full time. And I always would have nervousness before. It doesn't matter how many years I perform. I was always a little nervous. And I think there's something wrong if you're not just a little bit nervous. It means you don't care. Right. Right. <laughs> right. That's really true. Yeah. So, um, so did you want to introduce yourself to the, to sure. everyone about what you do and then um, maybe introduce the, our topic of the day. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm Laura Brecken and I have, um, True to Soul Life Coaching is, is my business. I'm a certified professional coach and energy leadership index master practitioner. And, um, I kind of consider myself a soul activist. Um, my whole journey started, um, well, I, I had an element of spirituality um, in my life or ever basically since I was born. Um, but recently, recently had a sort of spiritual boot camp in a way and, um, and took it to a whole new level. So, um, my, my passion is really helping people discover, um, what makes their soul sing and then overcoming the blocks and limitations and, and the past programming that really keeps us from moving forward and, and uh, bringing our light to the world and stepping into our purpose, which, um, which I really think is, is what we need to do, not only to bring a happiness and joy to ourselves, but to also really start to change the world to be a better place. Because when we are embodying our, our soul's purpose and our true light and love, that's going to spread to everybody else around us, and it really raises the right vibration of the planet and just makes it a, a better place. So that's really what makes my heart sing. Oh, I love it. It's so beautiful. So you have it all, you know, tell us about, tell everybody about your path and how you, know, you haven't always necessarily felt like our topic of the day, which is yeah. that spirituality doesn't fit in a box you you don't have to look a certain way to be spiritual but a lot of time not just look not just look a certain way but there's certain um judgments in the world about how one should function where they're spiritual like this is how spiritual people are and if you're not like that and you're not spiritual so there's we're yes. trying to break through those judgments today so what is your feeling about that right yeah when i when i started moving into this realm and, and really getting out there um and going to certain events and those kinds of things I had all sorts of judgments about others and myself and, and compared myself to, to the people that I was seeing at these events. And, um, well, maybe I'm not vegetarian, so maybe I'm not spiritual enough or I don't dress a certain way. I'm not wearing enough beads or enough shawls or whatever. And I, I didn't really see myself fitting into any box. And so I sort of started questioning questioning myself, does that mean that I'm not spiritual and have I not reached some sort of 
pinnacle point of where I need to be in order to move forward with this or really come out of my shell and say, hey, this is me, um, because I didn't fit in those boxes. Mm -hmm. And um, and so it's been the journey to, to come to that point where I'm like, wait a minute. No, you know, I'm not going to judge other people for what, how they, they wear or what they wear mm -hmm. or what they eat or what they drink. If, if you know, if you drink kombucha, then you're spiritual. <laughs> if you have a glass of wine, ooh, you know, yeah. like, you know, what is spirituality? What is it? And it's, yeah. but it, it's the inside job. Mm -hmm. So what, yeah. what has it been for you? How have you felt on the inside? Like, as you've been on your journey, what has it been on the inside for you? How well? Um, you know, that's hard to put into words. Wow. Like, so huge, no right? How yeah, do we that's... explain what we feel on the inside that makes us feel connected to spirit, to source, to our past? Yeah. Mm, that's, a, that's a tough one to explain. Um, for me, and this has been getting stronger and stronger, um, but it's it's this it's this excitement, this um, gosh, it's hard to explain. Um, I get I get tears in my eyes. Mm -hmm. That has I'm been totally happening really. more and more, where I will actually cry. I'm sitting in my living room and I have a thought and it, and I, it feels so true mm -hmm. and then I just start to cry. And it's like, why am I crying? There's not really an emotion necessarily mm -hmm. behind it. It's not sadness. It's not mm -hmm. even necessarily joy. It's just from this place of absolute truth. Mm -hmm. If that makes that. sense. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a very strange thing and it took me a little while, but now I've come to recognize it and, and now it's so comforting to me and it tells me, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's so right on, you know, mm -hmm. because it's, just that sensation and what it, what is it like for you? Do you have something similar? Well, I feel like what you're describing for me is when it's like you're connected. That's what the divine feels like. And that's what the, the energy of pure love feels like. And I actually had a spiritual teacher talk about that once, Bill Bauman. And he used to always say that the energy of pure love is a little tearful. Really? Oh, wow. And, and, I, and ever right. since he tuned me into that, like when I'm in a session with a client or something, I'll, I'll tune into that feeling. Sometimes I will feel that teary eye feeling. It's not, you know, you can have a session with a client and feel empty and feel like actually even like your own pain or something, mm -hmm. but it's not that. It's, it's separate than that. It's, it is just a pure energy yeah. that's coming through that feels so rich and so deep and so profound that it, it's the energy of awakening and of light and of love, right? Yes. And yeah, that's how it feels yeah, to me. Yeah, that's how it feels to me too. And it's it's just a beautiful feeling and it and it's, it, it lets me know that I'm on the right path. And and the more that it happens and the more that I pay attention, because at first I was just kind of blowing it off, thinking that's weird, you know, it's it's I'm feeling emotional today. Well you no, know, with time I got to recognize no, that's a clue. That's a clue that you're you're headed in, in, in the right direction and and it's um, become a beautiful way of of recognizing that and then following that, mm -hmm. um, it, it really helps when I'm trying to make choices, trying to decide what's right for me, what's wrong for me, that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, but as for explaining it any more than that, I don't know that I can. It's just the more that I pay attention to my body and go within, mm -hmm. really paying attention to my bodily sensations and when I'm feeling my chest and when I'm feeling in my stomach and that's where the truth comes out and when it when it is that that beautiful spiritual comfort and um just yes then I can feel it but it takes it's a practice mm -hmm. and it, I'm still practicing but it yeah it, mm -hmm. it, it's it takes in intention in mm -hmm. me to try to really tune in okay where is this coming from Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I also feel like, tell me if you, if you feel similar or if you have a opinion, I also feel like uh, spirituality is as you, the more you take in that, that feeling that you're describing, the more that happens, that's transforming your consciousness. That is healing you. That's uh, allowing us to be more awakened to how we want to be with others. 
And so then the spirituality really is how we're functioning in our life. Like, I don't know if any of you guys heard the term walk the talk. Yes. Like, because there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I do this. Like, they might, maybe they do yoga or maybe they do meditation, or, you know, but they, but then when you actually engage with them on a personal level, there's a lot of violent communication or there's a lot of blame energy, things like that. So I think it's that energy that we've been talking about that does transform also the way we act in our life. You know, so you could look a certain way, you could drink a glass of wine, you could eat meat or whatever, but if you're not kind to people, you right. know, then that's what's really the important part. That's, that's why I might have yeah. yeah. no, that. that that makes perfect sense. And, it, and that's so true. And that's, that particular thing is what led to me quitting my, my corporate job in 2016. Mm -hmm. And, um, taking the leap of faith, quitting, moving, leaving a relationship, it, because I had realized I was not walking my talk. And, and that, in that a split moment almost, it was like, oh my gosh, I, I'm not going to be able to move forward spiritually and move forward in my life until I start embodying what, I, what I'm believing, what I'm, what I'm reading about, what I'm saying, this is how I want to be until I face those fears and move forward and um, start walking my talk, then I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get there. Mm -hmm. And so it was that real shift of in starting to embody that because then when I started making those changes with myself, then it was, it was it changing everything else around me. You know, it's the old, once the inside changes, the outside changes. Well, but it, it's an inside job first, mm -hmm. and so, so with the spiritual part of it, it's it looks different for each of us, and it's always mm -hmm. going to be unique to our own path. So there's there's no judgment there mm -hmm. for how anybody else is going to be doing it. That it's it really starts from the mm -hmm. So you need to. Tell, tell them about you. Okay. And let me hear about your path. Okay. All right. Well, I've never, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this topic this week is because I have never, ever, ever fit into the stigma of what people think. I mean, maybe I do now more so now that I've been in California <laughs> for like 20 years. So I'm like, got a little bit of the look, you know, California. Um, <laughs> but um, I mean, I grew up in New York City. Okay. And I, um, even when I first met my first spiritual teacher, one of my first spiritual teachers, I found my bigger, bigger, longer link that I studied with Laura. You know, I know that I came in, I was like this tough girl. You know, I was a New Yorker, I was from Brooklyn, and, um, but I was into the craniums, you know. I, I had read books, and I had meditated. I had had a Buddhist teacher um, at around 19. I had my first Buddhist teacher. Um, but when I showed up in California, in Northern California, in Mount Shasta, that was where I ended up first moving to California, I did not look the part. And unfortunately, people do judge that way sometimes, no matter how open-minded we all think we are. People will look at you sometimes and they'll go, oh, you wear makeup. You're not na all natural. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, because I, I understand it, because as you spiritually evolve, Sometimes what happens is you have natural things you start to do. You might start your body, like you're saying, this is your body. So you do start to choose to eat healthier. You, their stigmas have been created for a reason. Sometimes we naturally fall into those things from the spiritual awakening. Right. But that doesn't mean you always fit those stigmas. Right. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are some people that that type of spiritual awakening is going to take them literally to a Buddhist temple somewhere in the Himalayas. Yeah. And that's their, that's their path. But it, it's not everybody's path. Yep. Yep. And so I've dealt with that for a long time because I love going to spiritual gatherings. I love going, I love being around community. I'm a Sagittarius. And so I would always try to go, here I am. I want to be part of this community. And then I would feel, and some of this could have been my own person perception of yes. my own wounding, you know, from childhood, because I grew up Jehovah's Witness, I was always different, I don't practice that necessarily now, but I used to, and so um, I would show up, and then I would just feel this kind of energy, like, you know, you, people would be surprised 
when when I would speak, you know, what would come out. And I I got my butt kicked to be the other end of it. Well, I went into judgment when I first met my uh, another spiritual teacher that I brought up, Bill Bauman, because he did not he did not necessarily look the part that I thought. Like he kind of, mm -hmm. I think he was from like the Midwest. He was just kind of like a, a he was like older man. He was just you know button down shirt and very like, you know, just not what I would perceive because I've had other spiritual teachers that were worn the drapes, clothing, and everything. Right. And and then he started talking, even the voice didn't feel like my vibe. Like it was like, oh, you know, he just seems a little conservative or something. And I'm I was from Brooklyn, I'm, I'm liberal and I'm this. And we have all these judgments about ourselves. And then when he started talking, he his master presence came out so big. I literally was knocked out. I couldn't move my body. He downloaded me with so much love. I was like, this man is going to cry. He's a teacher. <laughs> so, you know, it's wow. so one of the messages I want to put out to everybody who's watching is give everybody a chance. Don't just decide this is who they are. You see them on a video and you immediately go, oh, they've got this or they look like this. Mm -mm. Now, I understand we need to resonate with people. We need to feel yeah. like, okay, so that's my vibe, that's my tribe, purpose tribe, that's why we need to show yeah. that. But even go beyond that, because that might be part of your awakening, you need to be inclusive. In my Pleiadian tradition, we talk about unity and diversity. That was one of the, uh, the virtues we, we uh, like. Mm -hmm. And it's just being able to be one while all being diverse. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, that idea of I think I think the discernment comes in there as well, and um, being able to to discern what's what's right and what fits and what resonates without the judgment piece of it, because they're they're two very different energies. I think mm. which is great. Yeah, then that's probably hard to discern sometimes. It is. How do you discern? How do you discern? You know what you resonate with. What's versus? Are you just becoming judgmental? Right, right. And then I would say, it, it go into the go into the body. What is your body telling you? Does, is there a fear energy behind mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. um, really, where where is that that coming from? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's switch to the folks for a second. We've got some comments here. Oh, Hi, Susan Kelber. Hello, light worker. Susan's also a hairdresser. I can't wait for you to meet our guest coming on in eight minutes, Heather, who's also a fellow hairdresser. More than a hairdresser. I can't put her in a box. She's so much more. You're going to learn about her. And then is this your friend, Kimberly? Kimberly Riley Keller? Hi, Kimberly. Oh, is that Heather's friend? Oh. Awesome. Hi, Kimberly. And then Barbara, my mother-in-law. Thank you for being on. <laughs> this is so fun. This is so fun. Yeah, great. Anybody else is commenting. I'm going to scroll down. We're getting comments. I actually have to scroll. This is so cool. Okay. Oh. Okay, great. So, um, so we've got a few minutes before we'll have other people on. Um, so how else has this, has this input impacted your life? Feeling like you didn't fit? Um, you said sometimes you go to gatherings and stuff like that. Yeah, to some extent, um, I found myself actually not going to some things. Some things that I think I would have liked to go to, um, but stopped myself just because I, I felt like I didn't belong. Um, or other things, I would, I would walk into a room and, wow, you know, I... I don't know that I fit in here. And then it, it was more than recognizing that and saying, okay, well, what is it about me? Why am I feeling uncomfortable here? You know, what, um, what judgments am I having against, or right. against myself? Um, and, and sort of working through it in, in a way. Um, but it, it, um, it did, it has helped me that. And so I had to come to terms with just being okay being myself, which is why I called my business True to Soul, and it has, that has been my whole journey, is being okay to be authentic 
authentically me, no matter where I am or what I am doing, not worrying about what other people are thinking mm -hmm. um, or feeling and, and really just embodying my authenticity to the greatest extent possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point because as you go down the rabbit hole, it's like, is it really, are you really creating a situation where people are in judgment because it's what is inside the first place? Or is it just we're in a world co creating and sometimes you're going to have people come in and it is, it actually is happening. It's not just something you created. Right. It's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's down the rabbit hole for sure. Well, I also learned this lesson. Um, I had a Dallas teacher. Um, who taught about his, he would share about his teachers, and he would say that all his teachers ate the most unhealthy food, and they were, um, they, he was, they were Chinese, and he said they just had no judgment on anything. They had, they had cultivated their life force energy to a point where whatever they ate, they transmuted. Oh, really? So, like, that's a whole other thing. Like, we learned how to do that. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we, well, we could do a show one day on, a, on the spiritual practices that he taught that, that do that, that are very simple, that create this magnetic life force in your body that allow you to transmute whatever, whatever things you're doing on the first plane. So that goes to a whole other place. And then, and those teachers were at the point where they couldn't care less about what anybody thought. Like they knew, it wasn't even you know, a lot. Yeah, they and, knew. And yeah. so I feel like part of this, even me doing this, at least on my, my reasoning, is, um, is not only to share with, with people and to help more people, but it's also on my own journey, what I get out of it is also to just be like, here I am, you know, this is me, this is what I have to offer. And whoever is supposed to be connected with me, that's great. And not worry about, you know, um, at, at all what anybody, if they don't like it or they like it, or, you know, and go more into neutrality, that's part of like, you know, my, yeah, my spiritual evolutionary journey too. I think that is my natural next step as well, because I kind of was, after we practiced yesterday, I freaked out a little bit because I've kept my personal page and my business page separate. I mean, I'll put some of my stuff on my personal page, but overall I don't. And so to put it out there with, friends and family and people who really haven't seen this side to this extent mm -hmm. of me. It, it, I had a, I had a moment last night. It was like, wow, this is really happening. But at the same time, there's something so true and so beautiful about <laughs> it. It's like, oh yeah, I totally know I need to do this and, and, freeing. and freeing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's just coming out of the coming out of that closet, and, and it's just one <laughs> spiritual closet. Spiritual closet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it really is. I mean, it, for me, and in, in, in even just in the last two years, because when I was in my corporate job, I mean, nobody knew any of this, and I didn't have one person that I could talk to about spiritual things. And yeah. So this has been a, it's been a very crash course, very quick, <laughs> pushing me. You know, like. This is where you need to be. So, um, so this is so good, and it's just one more authenticity, it's one more being true to the soul, and I love it. Authenticity. That's another. That's the inside job, yes, right? It is. Yep. It is. Yep. yep. Well, I just realized one thing. We we're almost ready to have Heather on. I forgot to introduce what I myself because there's people on here that yes. are from her community that don't know who I am right. or why I'm on this, why I'm sitting here with her. So yes. I'll just briefly share. I'm a psychotherapist, but a uh, metaphysical energy healer too. So I combine both of them. I've been doing it for 18 years. I started with that teacher that I talked to you guys about in the show, uh, Mark Wanyan and Mel Shasta. And ever since then, I had other teachers that just kept helping me grow and grow and grow. And, um, and now I have a private practice here in Southern California. So, yes. and what's your and website? She's extremely talented. Oh, um, thank you. My website <laughs> is, um, is larabrecken.com. Okay, and then mine is blissfullifecounseling.info. So, hey, if anybody needs to be, you guys know who we are now. That's right. So I'd like to, you, do you feel ready to bring? Yeah, bring her? absolutely. All yeah, right, I'd like to welcome our guest of honor today, Heather Cleves. Mm -hmm. And and would you mind if I share with them a little bit about what, with while you're here, about what it was like, how I, just a teeny bit of my experience of being with you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is Heather, everybody. Thank you so hey much guys. for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really happy to be here. In my spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We are live in Heather's 
This is her sanctuary. We are live in here. This is a beautiful space. We had to tear it apart to get the camera right, but this is a gorgeous space. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just channels. want to say a quick thank you to everybody that's um, signed on today, took a minute out of your day. Um, I was sitting over here, and I'm actually a little emotional, so give me a second. Mm. Um, someone who is on today, um, I don't know who you are, um, but I thank you for stepping outside of your comfort zone and, and coming on to this and knowing that somewhere in your heart um, you needed to be in this message today. So I hope you're blessed, I hope you're touched, I hope you get from this what you need to either make it through today, um, make it through this minute, this hour, um, or whatever it is that you're going through. Um, I'm happy you're here, we're happy you're here, and um, thank you. So I just needed to see you again. This is why, I, I mean, this is who she is all day, time. I don't know what it is. Because it's, well, that's what I was gonna tell them, that when I went, you know, I wanted to get my hair done, and I had a vibe, like I read her profile, I feel the energy, and I was like, she calls her practice the Heather Experience. So I'm like, okay, this is an experience. This isn't, I already knew, this isn't gonna be just me going to get my hair done. And so I, um, I when I went in, I remember, like probably the second, well, both times with Penelope, the second time I, I visited Heather, within five minutes, she had spray tissues. I was crying within five minutes of entering the door, sitting down, and just talking to her. She has a way of opening your heart and, and tuning into you and then going laser beam into your heart and just allowing you to heal. That was within five minutes. Oh, you know? <laughs> You're like, I don't know what's happening. I, mean, I said that to you, right? I was like, I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't know why I'm crying. She's like, it's just space well, no, <laughs> this well, space yeah i i first of all you can't you, you apologize and i think that's a real natural reaction right for us when we're we're feeling emotion for some reason or we're going through something and we're putting that on somebody right um we have this natural reaction say, i'm so sorry Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to jump into it. I remember um, I was listening to someone speak one time, and she said something that really resonated with me. And I brought it into this practice because I thought it was so poignant. And she said, you know, we as human beings are afraid to sit with people in their pain. Mm -hmm. We're afraid to sit with them. We want to fix it. We want to heal you. We want to give you some enlightened thing mm -hmm. to 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 change your perception of your situation so that you get better fast quick and so you're happier right now instead of sad like you're feeling and and and, and what i got from that was like that's what i was doing you know mm -hmm. people would come in and i wanted i wanted to help them i wanted to heal them i didn't i wanted everyone to be happy mm -hmm. the reality is is that 100 percent happiness all the time isn't authentic mm -hmm. which is what you guys have been talking about this yeah. authenticity um people don't relate with that people mm -hmm. don't relate with hi i'm heather everything in my life is perfect <laughs> and <laughs> i'm gonna do your hair today and tell you how you can be perfect i ran my business for like that for a long time to be honest with you guys a long time and i felt like i connected but it wasn't until i stepped back and i started sharing my own authenticity that I was able to all of a sudden understand the pain, sit with each other in the pain, not try to fix it, but acknowledge it. Live there for a minute, you know? Like, we're so busy trying to get enlightened mm -hmm. and move to that next level. Now, get more spiritual, get better, get happier, be filled with more joy. Take a minute, take a minute to just visit you know you visit that pain for a minute you live there you acknowledge it i feel this right now i feel pain i feel sadness i feel angry i feel upset once you acknowledge it the freedom in that that's authenticity when you acknowledge it all of a sudden it's like boom you broke the chain right there and now now we can move now we can push forward and so I started understanding that when people sat in my chair, they were coming for a greater purpose. Mm -hmm. And I'm passionate about that hair. I love, I love the creation. I love art and music and painting. 
and and hair and <laughs> she did that. I love yeah, all that. that. But what I love, I love is that human connection. Am I right? Yeah. Absolutely. When you can, when you yes. can look at someone and say, "I see you." I don't just see you, but I feel you. When you sat there and you cried, I felt you. And we just started intertwining, right? Mm -hmm. and, and developing this dance, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I think that everybody just wants someone to dance with, mm -hmm. you exactly. know, mm -hmm. that can have the synchronicity of understanding that we're all going through something. And we can all figure it out together if we are just authentic, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I can ramble. I can ramble. No, it's, it's not a ramble. It's, it's your ramble. master presence. That's what it. That's what I feel. It's your master presence that comes through your higher self that comes through when you're with people, and it is so relieving to finally not have to hide. Yeah. You know, especially when it's it's somebody new, like maybe some client and they don't know you that well, but right away I feel I felt that Heather was able to set the premise that I don't have to hide. Mm. Oh baby. <laughs> baby girl. <laughs> so, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, that's amazing. So so tell me what went on when you sat down there in the very beginning. Oh yeah, you're shaking. Yeah. Um so I, I was sitting off camera, and, and you guys were talking, and I closed my eyes. And um, what happens with me and, like, my process is that I just, I've taken a step forward in my life where I know what I sound like, okay? Bear with me here. I know what I sound like when I'm told not to do something. Don't do that. Okay, I hear you, girl. I hear you. <laughs> you know, you need to go there. Okay, I'm moving. You know, you need to embrace that person. All right, they're in my arms. You need to walk away from that person. All right, I'm stepping. So I'm sitting there and I just get overwhelmed. Like I feel warm. I feel like a little glow. It's not just the highlight. <laughs> sound you know like really good <laughs> and and then it's like no 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 you know the voice what needs to be said what is the message who is listening come to me talk to me press upon my heart and so I don't know who you are I don't know your name I don't know I don't know but you're on my heart and you start pressing there mm -hmm. and so I start to feel and it's like there's an urgency. That's what I feel. Mm -hmm. okay. It's an urgency. It's it's like when you sat down with me, and I literally, I'm like, I was. I think when I started, I was going to mix your color. <laughs> I, I wish I could stand up and show you, but she's like talking to me. She's crying, and I'm like, what I'm seeing is. <laughs> yes, I remember what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I remember what I was talking about. I was saying that I felt like I hadn't, I had missed an opportunity, and then I was starting over now, mm -hmm. and that I. It was regret a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like if I don't just just right. continued at that point. Uh -huh. And what did I, you remember what I said? I gave you a word. Yeah, you gave word timing. Mm -hmm. You were talking about timing. I said it wasn't your time. Uh -huh. Yeah. I said it wasn't your time. Because she was yeah. going through this kind of bit of regret. Like if it had happened then, things would be different. Mm -hmm. if, I had, if I had just done this, this, and this, it would have been different. And I stopped her, and, I, and you know, you never know how people are going to do it. I'm like, stop. stop. <laughs> and she, but she yielded. it. You yielded. Yeah. it. I thought, I think you that. And I said, stop. And I said, it wasn't your time. It wasn't your time. And it was like, if, if, and I was trying to explain to you, I remember this, this, this vision. And this has been on my heart for a while for, I think, a lot of people, is I'm getting this vision of, like, this, this mountain, you know? 
we're all we're all wanting this 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 exponential happiness you know we all want to just feel good and we want to feel like we're living each day with purpose authenticity and and love and joy and that we're, we matter that we're making a difference that we're fulfilling our purpose and sometimes life steps in <laughs> and you're like could you be a bigger speed bump right now because like, <laughs> i got somewhere to, i had a plan i got somewhere to go i got somewhere to go and so but what I try to help, and I think I share this with you as well, is this vision is this mountain, you know, we're going, and there are going to be peaks, and there are going to be valleys, and then there's going to be moments where you rise, and you see the, the sun, and you're like, okay, you know what, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep going, because no one ever wrote the book in life and said, you know what, chapter one, this is going to be easy, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> but what we tend to forget is, is that the end of a matter it typically be a lot better than its beginning, mm -hmm. but it's really hard to see through that that space. And so what I reminded you was, what's well, all over the mountaintop, you can't even see, but that's the destiny. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose. That's the life-changing shit. Nope, it's fine. <laughs> that's the life-changing shit. Remember, you can be however you are and be spiritual. <laughs> that, you may, that you need to say that word. That you need to get to. But you can't see over the mountain because you're still over here. But you gotta know. You gotta know. And when you know, then you move, right? Yeah. Then you push forward. Yes. But it's when you live in that kind of like, I don't know. You yeah. know that that kind of look. In California, we've got this beautiful thing called the ocean, right? People go there all the time. I mean, we're talking lots of people go there in June, July. But us crazy people that live here, we go there on like Christmas Day, you know, because it's not, you know. <laughs> we go there all the time. Why do we go to the ocean? I'm gonna tell you why we go to the ocean. Because it moves. People don't realize how polluted our oceans are, but yet we're still going there because they're beautiful. It's beautiful. Why is it beautiful? Because there's movement. There's movement. You know where people don't hang out? Lagoons. <laughs> you know why? Because <laughs> they stagnant. smell. They, they, they're yeah. stagnant. And what, what, do you know what stagnant water smells like? It smells disgusting. Yeah. So people don't hang out there. We hang out. But the ocean has way more shit in it than the living. We yeah. all like way more. But yet, for some reason, we feel good. Why? Because of the moves. So I encourage you, and I encourage people when they come in here, like whatever it is, you know? And to go back to that first point, like, yeah, visit that spot for a minute. I got keep moving. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I had to move down to Southern California because that ocean energy is so healing. There it is. It's so powerful. Yeah. And I have to be here. I yeah. have to. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because it's, it's, it's very similar to growth, right? Yes. When we're stagnant, when we're not doing anything, when we're not fulfilling our purpose, when we're not touching lives, mm -hmm. when we're not helping, we smell. Like, it's literally smell. Like, you're like, what is that smell? Oh, it's me being lazy. <laughs> 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 and then I'm not living my purpose. Oh, that's right, you know? I think when you tap yeah. into that more, you start to be more uncomfortable, yeah. right? When you're not moving. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite visuals is, is of going with the flow and riding the waves of life because using the ocean again and there there are times it's, it's very calm it's like glass mm -hmm. there are other times where it kills people yeah. because mm -hmm. it flips you over it pulls you under the undertow and 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 then the next day it's going to be nice and calm mm -hmm. and so for me i use i use that as a visualization all the time yeah and that's just that's just life it's just how it is and yeah. so you just grab your board and you do the best yeah, absolutely. And when you and you do the and, and then you do the best you can with the belief that you are capable. You know, um, there's so many there's so many moments you know where we can get down on ourselves where it feels like it's just all too much. But when you remember that you're capable, like I can do this. Like that whole thing, like you woke up today. 
your heart's beating, you know, like, <laughs> that's one thing, you know, you're capable of taking one step, and guess what, if you're capable of taking one step, you can take two, whatever it is, you know, but yeah, you are, you are capable of getting out there, and moving, and, and living in this purpose and necessity for your life, um, but you've got to remember that it's okay, right? Yes, yes absolutely. To not be <laughs> in lights all the time. Yeah. Right? Sure. That okay. there is um, purpose in the shit. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, right? Like, like, have you ever tasted like something that tasted really gross? Mm -hmm. Like really, like you were, you took a bite and you're like, that's not for me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you wouldn't yeah. necessarily know how disgusting that tasted, right? Unless you had tasted like, I don't know, like the sweetest thing on your lips that you had ever tasted before, <laughs> and you know how good it tastes, you wouldn't know, right? <laughs> how crappy that tasted had you not tasted that sweet and vice versa. So it's like this this that heaven contrast. Blood. You have to have that Absolutely. contrast in order to know that. Yeah. Yeah. I have highlights and low lights. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And right. I wanna kind of go back to something you said. You talked about how it's you know, we gotta do the comments too. You talked about how mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's hard in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then you know, but you can't see that the end is going to be so much better. Mm -hmm. So it's like that perseverance in between. That that's that's the good stuff. Having to just sure. kind of move through that middle part. Yeah, the middle part is where a lot of people give up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you keep going, you're going to get to the, the jewel. Yeah. So, but let, let's go over the. There are some people commenting. I have a, a friend, a, a friend of mine, um, and in, in the military, they use the the, uh, the word bitch, and they, they say it they say it with each other, and it really stuck with me because that's that middle, that's that middle, like push, you know, think think of yourself like in that moment, like, and I'll sometimes like, and uh, you know, now I'll use that word because I think it like blew my mind, a simple word, right? But I was like, right. that's my word now, but like. Think of that. Like sometimes I will say it out loud. If there was God, if there were cameras in my house, you would think I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> because I will literally like if I'm having a tough time, like the best thing you can do, honestly, get out of your head. Our brains are filled with oh so God. much noise. Oh, yeah. So if you just get it out, sometimes I'll get it out by way of a painting. Sometimes I'll get it out by way of sitting at my piano. But you've got to get it out. It's like it's like your old dentist used to say, you know, like <laughs> if you don't floss, like if you can't wait a stop. If you, I gave a, I gave a, I gave a, I talked to a bunch of kids one time and I was trying to teach them about resentment. And I was like. <laughs> Bless my bless my twenty one year old heart. Right? I was like, "Listen, you know, it's like a piece of steak in your tooth." And they're like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> you know? And I was like, "No, like your dentist tells you to floss. You know, you know why you gotta floss because if you leave that in your heart, I mean, your tooth, you know, um, it, it will decay and you'll lose the tooth. Mm. Like, get it out, <laughs> get it out." And like, I don't just feel like the dentist was like, "How often are you flossing?" You know, and I was like. Ten times before I came here today, you know, but that doesn't work. It's gotta be consistent. Get it out by any way, like by any way necessary that you have to get it out of of this and get it out. And sometimes that is acting like a crazy person at your house and just saying, "Okay, I gotta push right now." Yeah, you know, like scream, yell. I gotta draw. I gotta write. I gotta do scream. Okay, right. <laughs> I love it. Get that steak out of your tooth. Get it. <laughs> So we've got a lot of people commenting on you. Um, Joanne Jackson says you're doing so dang gorgeous inside and out. <sighs> and thanks, baby. That it's a lie that life is easy. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Susan says she's <laughs> <she's> literally coughing. <laughs> she is so funny. By the way, Susan, I knew it. I knew it would be a connection. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Liz Beach Haley says, love your life in your space, not someone else's. Always be you. Yes, yes. baby girl. Beautiful. Love you, Liz. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody that's on today, watching for all who will ever watch this. Oh, love it. Bianca Rays. Aw, love you too, baby. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> 
Susan, when are you coming down here? We gotta have you on the Facebook Live. <laughs> I think, I think honestly, you know, I'm, I'm so happy you guys are, are here in this space because uh, I think it's important um, when you invite people into your space, whether it's you invite someone out with a girlfriend for coffee, you know, or you meet up um, at, with someone at their house, um, or you invite someone into that space of yours, have intention, you know, what is your intention? What is your intention walking out of your door today? Pick one thing. It, it as simple, as simple could be, today I want to smile at one person. Because all we want to do is, 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 is be, you know, accomplish something, have a goal, set it, achieve it. And that's what keeps us moving. And so at the end of the day, you know, when you walk into the space and you start fun, my intention for that day was for that anybody that I had, I had the honor of getting to be in the presence of. For them to feel safe, for them to feel secure, and for them to be able to feel unabandoned. So what is your intention, you know? It, again, like, it could be like, you know what my intention today is? All I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna eat a carrot. That's all I can do today, you know, because I need to get one piece of vegetable in my body. Like, it doesn't have to be some insane thing. Like, start somewhere. A bowl with tahini and drama. Yes, babe. It doesn't have to be that. It could just be a carrot. But look, like, look, whenever anything is getting built, what do we build first? We build the foundation first, you know? So if you're not building the foundation for your day, we can't expect greatness out of our day. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, coming into my space as a hairdresser, um, that's, that, that's what it is for me. The intention is always to do great hair. I've been doing this for 20 years. That, that is a given in my day to make people feel beautiful when they walk out of this room, be like wanting to take their picture and they go home to their, their baby boy and they're like, you know, like let's make a baby. You no, know, whatever. And then that, that's always, that's like number one, you know, uh, that's number two. Because number one is to connect, you know. Yeah. What a gift, what a yeah. gift. We, I think we're really lacking with that connection these sure. days. People are in such a rush and they're so hurried and we're not seeing each other anymore. Oh, such a good and, point. And that, when you were saying earlier, you're talking about um, just seeing what was going on. And, and that alone is huge. Huge. Yeah. Oh my God. Like to, to, you know, look, gotta love our phones. They, they, they allow us to do so much. But look up. Look. If you can't tell me the color, you know, of someone's eyes that you just met, it used to be, people used to say that all the time, like, oh, your eyes are great, your eyes are, I guarantee you, 75% of this world doesn't know people's eye color anymore, you know? Like, we've got to see each other. Because when we see each other, we connect and when you connect with people that energy is that energy is so sacred you know so sacred that I feel like because it's been so lost when you feel it talk about moving mountains okay. you know it'll blow your mind it'll blow your mind and sometimes this is it this is, this is it, this is it, this is what I have. It's not always about, you know, um, another person. Look in the mirror, you know? Look in the mirror, look into your own eyes and connect with you, you know? Connect with your eyes. Connect with your voice. Connect with your heart because, you know, everybody can be looking for someone that's gonna change their life or that's gonna give them this special word that is gonna you know, help get them to the next level. But what I think a lot of us don't know is that it's you. It's you. So spend some time. Spend some time. Look at yourself in the mirror. Look into your eyes. 
tell me what color your eyes are. Tell me, you know, what's behind them. Tell me what makes them sad. Tell me what makes them hurt. Tell me what makes them cry with joy. Start answering those questions about yourself, you know? Because when you connect with you, the connections that you can have with anyone that comes after you will blow your fucking mind. Yeah. Really well. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> inspirational <laughs> words. And Deborah Moyer says, love that about mm -hmm. keeping intention simple and being grateful for what's already around you. Yeah. Cheryl Hogue says, my intention every day is to enjoy the randomness of my day, my life. I am surprised every day. Ah, Cheryl, I love that. I was just talking about that, that intention is so powerful and that like it's the little things that life becomes serendipitous when mm. you start to really pay attention to every little thing that happens. That little thing could really be a life-changing thing because you pay attention, which has been the case for me in terms of like many of my awakenings. I shared a story before, I think I knew it about that I had an awakening just by seeing a piece of paper on the ground that led me to my spiritual teacher. I was walking down the street in Brooklyn and it was like a little ripped up, dirty piece of paper on the yeah, ground yeah. that I picked up and it said uh, voice lessons with this lady, uh, Maria Fonzo from Bahama. <laughs> and so, and she, it, little did I know, she was going to actually become my new spiritual teacher. Yeah. But if I had, I just yeah. decided that little piece of paper was, you know, just that's our right. Yeah. right. It, but it was a life altering experience yeah. because so. you were going, you were going about your day, right, with awareness, right, with with your eyes open. Yeah, yeah. I remember driving down the seventy eight freeway one day, and I mean, I left my house that morning with with a fury in my heart, like I will, <laughs> something will give me a sign today. I was going to be speaking to a group of people, and I was like, oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get it today. <laughs> you know in that space you are loved you are celebrated you are secure you are safe you are beautiful you are you know and so it's it spoke to me because it's like all right if you lived here you'd already be home where should i be living right exactly we should be living in that awareness all the time, you know, because then we begin to walk in life. You know, does that love make sense? That. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Love that. Piece of paper on the ground. Yeah. You know? yeah. Intention. Start looking. Looking for the look for the story. You know, look for the meaning. Think outside of the busyness and the hustle of the adult life. You know, <laughs> find the wonder. Find the piece of paper, find the billboard. Love it. Yeah. So how can people find you? How can if people want to have you the can, experience with you? What you have a website? Like what's <laughs> you will find me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can honestly, um, you uh, I'm on Instagram, um, the Heather Hair. Um, and look. My phone is 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 open. I gave a lady at Michael's my phone number the other day. <laughs> she was like so confused in the pain aisle. You know, I was like, here's my number. She's like, I can text you. I was like, yes. <laughs> you know, like let's talk. Let's talk. Plus, so she was 80 years old and wanted to. Anyway, text me. Text me seven six zero four two zero four seven seven seven. You text me. Hit me up. Yeah, four seven seven. Yeah. That was back in the day where uh, uh, AirTouch let you pick your phone number. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, that's that's my my business line. Um, you can text me, you can come see me, you can hang out with me, um, you can come share with me your story, and I'll share with you mine, and we'll be authentic together and uh, try to find some uh, some purpose in this world that we all have. You know? <sighs> Thank you so much uh, for doing this with us today. Yeah. Yeah.
thank yeah. you, my my co my co-host. <laughs> um, so we will be on again next Sunday, and the guest is a surprise. We'll find out who it's is not going to be me. <laughs> I'll, I'll, miss, I'll miss you guys terribly. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for coming on, thank and so much. Um, have a beautiful Sunday. Have a wonderful social Sunday. Hope that this look for your billboard. <laughs> look for your billboard. Look for your piece of paper. Go out today with intention. You'll find it. I promise you. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks for coming.